Hello, it's Jim Lynn. Welcome to another episode of Mr. Lynn's Workshop. Today we're going to talk about tool tuning. And to be specific, we're going to start off by tuning this Lee Nielsen number no. four hand plane. Now, um, it's true to say that uh, hand planes of this quality do work straight out of the box, but the manufacturer does expect you to do some work to improve the performance of the hand plane. At the very least, you should prepare the blade, especially sharpening it, and uh, prepare the chip breaker for use as well. But there's other things, and um, David Charlesworth used to teach that you should go into the guts of the plane and look for little improvements, little improvements here and there, which on their own might not seem like much, but when you add them up, you get a plane that's just going to work just that bit better. So is it absolutely necessary? No, of course it isn't, but it's worth doing. So that's what we're going to do today on Mr. Lynn's Workshop. During the first few minutes of this video, there's no background sound. I just screwed up the recording. This is my Lee Nielsen number no. 4 smoothing plane with the bronze body. First we'll dismantle it to have a look at the inside surfaces. Taking the lever cap out first, that's made of bronze. If we turn it over and have a look at the underside, we're going to be polishing that edge right at the tip there. That's where it mates with the chip breaker and also the copper wear strip at the back. Taking the chip breaker and blade out and setting them down to one side and then removing the lever cap tensioning screw. Moving the blade lateral adjust lever to one side gives easier access to dismantle the rear handle. Now it's just held on with a steel rod, it's threaded at both ends. One end goes into the body of the plane, the other end as you can see has a brass knob to help adjust it. Next we'll unscrew the blade depth adjuster knob. Now it's uh, reverse threaded so you turn it clockwise to take it off. Now we can see the three frog screws, the outer two screws hold the frog down tight onto the body and the central screw adjusts its position fore and aft. So just use a screwdriver to take those out and the frog just pops right out. Then we can take out the central adjustment screw. The front knob's just held on by a, a nice long brass bolt. Now we can have a closer look at the ramp on the body that the frog slides on. Now it's machined with a, an end mill and if I run my finger around I can feel tiny imperfections uh, left on that surface, particularly along this front edge. Well I can certainly improve on those surfaces. Now turning our attention towards the mouth of the plane, I can feel the odd imperfection on, the, on both edges of that. I'll be cleaning that up, um, it's important they don't leave any marks on the wood. I'll also be checking the sole for flatness and polishing it, not expecting it to be anything but flat, it's a Lee Nielsen plane, and I'll be polishing the sides and top surfaces as well. I'm not going to be using this as a shooting board plane, so uh, they don't have to be dead square. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, have a look at the underside of the frog here. There's definitely still the grinding marks on it and a little bit of discoloration. Um, we're just going to be polishing that basically. It's already flat, so to keep it flat I'm going to be working on this granite surface plate. Uh, to start off with, I've got some 2500 grit paper for no other reason than uh, just to give it a quick rub backwards and forwards so that we can see what we've got. Just a few strokes will do it. Uh, and that's enough to give us a telltale of what's going on for flatness. So yeah, you can see just a low point just at the front edge there. So now to do the bulk of the work I've changed here to 1500 grit paper. Uh, just to see if that's going to be enough to take out that low point. Turns out it wasn't, so now I've changed to 400 grit paper and I've also spray mounted it down onto the surface plate and that enables me to use two hands. And that did the trick. So that's the result I'm looking for. A nice even scratch pattern. The central dip removed completely. And now before I go any further I'm just going to ease those edges just in case there's any burrs left from the process we've just completed. Now normally at this point you'd work your way back up the grits of paper, getting finer and finer till you get a, a good polish that you're happy with. But I'm not going to do that right now and you'll see why in a minute. For the next stage I need the frog to slide smoothly down the ramp and right into the mouth. 
However, when I was doing a dry run, I noticed that it was catching on the right-hand corner where the ramp meets the mouse. So there's obviously a, a burr in there or something. So that's an easy fix. I'll just get this file and uh, file that until it's gone completely. Well, that didn't take long. And as you can see here, the frog now slides down its ramp into the mouth with no hint of a catch. So that's exactly what we want. Here I'm just doing some work on the long edges of the mouth. Uh, now if you get scratches or even burrs on your long edges that can transfer to your work. So this is an, an important task here and I could feel some scratches so uh, I thought I'll go in with the diamond file on the long edges and uh, make sure I've got that nice and smooth. And for the short edges I used the edge of the slim file. Now it's time to do some work on the ramp. For this process, the first thing to do is to cut a wee square of 220 grit wet and dry paper, spray it with spray mount, let it get tacky, and then sort of squish the underside of the frog down onto it and leave it to dry. Then you can trim the edges of the paper so that it's flush with the edges of the frog. It's important to get the sides flush with the sides of the frog, but to leave a wee bit of excess at the front and back. Having said that, uh, I left a little bit too much excess at the front and the paper was hitting the far side of the mouth uh, so it wasn't quite getting um, good grinding power right at the edge of that uh, frog ramp there. So I trimmed it a wee bit closer to the front of the frog so that I could get uh, deeper down into the ramp. Now just apply quite firm downward pressure as you move the frog backwards and forwards. Now there's not much travel available so you just have to be patient and take your time. But I've already made a difference here. So what I'm going to do now is change grits and carry on. I continue with the 220 grit paper off camera for the simple reason the camera was getting in the way. And then I change to 800 grit paper and this is the result. Uh, this is the result of the work so far. Uh, most of the manufacturer's scratch has been removed except some low points, but that's okay. Enough of the high spots have been removed to make this uh, a good job so far. So the next stage is to change to 1500 grit paper and keep working to get a polish. This is the result of that. Um, getting a much better polish, a lot more of the marks removed. And so finally we'll move up to uh, 2500 grit paper. And that's what we want. Uh, that's a really good finish. Yes, it's shiny, which is lovely, but more importantly, everything is smooth and flat. And because we used the frog as the grinding tool, both surfaces now match each other. After using the frog as a grinding tool, of course, I had to clean it up. So I used solvent to get the glue off, then worked my way up the grits to polish that to match the ramp. And the result is a really nice, silky, smooth fit. I'm really pleased with that. Right, back to the surface plate for the next stage. Some spray mount, then some 220 grit sandpaper. And we're going to work on the upper surface of the frog. The issue is that we can't just turn the frog upper surface down onto the paper and start rubbing. Because as you can see here, the um, depth adjuster yoke and the lateral adjuster button uh, stick up and prevent us from doing that. The solution is a jig of some sort to provide clearance for the button and the yoke. What better jig than to use the blade itself? As you can see here, the button of the lateral adjustment lever sits below the surface and the yoke, being free to move, just trails along on its own. First thing to do is to smooth the surface on the blade that's going to contact the frog. So here's the setup. I've got the granite surface plate with the 220 grit paper and I've got two magnetic blocks on the blade just to provide a good grip. And back to rubbing backwards and forwards again. There's a lot of rubbing backwards and forwards in fettling work. And that's smooth enough. Remember, we're not trying to flatten this, we're just trying to smooth and polish it. Next, some spray mount on the blade and then uh, stuck down some 800 grit paper. The paper is stuck to the surface of the blade which is going to contact the frog. Now I cut off the excess paper from around the blade. Next, I'm cutting out the paper from the slot in the blade. This will give the lateral adjuster button and the depth of cut adjuster yoke freedom of movement. Now 
This time I'm spraying glue on the other side of the blade and I stick it down onto the granite surface plate. Now you note that I've let the, uh, the end of the blade overhang the surface plate a bit. This is to make it a lot easier to get the blade off. Yeah, I've learned that the hard way. Right, now we can polish the surface of this frog. Now you can see that the little yolk tucks in nicely there and both it and the lateral adjuster button drop into the slot meaning that the entire uh, frog surface is now in contact with the paper. So, more toing and froing and toing and froing. Toing and froing and toing and froing, but eventually we get a nice polished surface. Now, we're not finished with that surface, we need to change papers and work our way back up the grit. So the 800 grit peels off nicely, just brushing off some of the dust. The blade just pops off the surface plate quite easily. Um, the glue's still tacky, so I can just stick it straight down onto the 1500 grit paper. And again, the glue's still tacky, so straight down onto the granite surface plate. And then guess what? Toing and froing. And now we've replaced the 800 grit scratches with 1500 grit scratches. Now the glue uh, had gone off a little bit so I, I cleaned the blade and sprayed some more on and stuck it down to the 2500 grit paper, uh, trimmed it. Uh, and then I found that the, um, there was enough glue residue on, the, on this side of the blade to stick it straight down onto the surface plate. Toing and froing and toing and froing until finally we've got an acceptable polish, nice and smooth, not quite finished, a couple of steps to go. Um, make sure you do clean the plate and the blade with solvent and it's also a good idea to make sure the camera's in focus. Good, we've got these two surfaces sliding smoothly, although there's a further step to come. But for now we can turn our attention to the side surfaces of the frog. This process is somewhat simpler, sticking down some 1500 grit paper onto the granite surface plate and then just rubbing the side surface of the frog to and fro, T-A-F. Let's call this taffing from now on. So here I am taffing the side surface of the frog on the 1500 grit paper. I didn't spend too long on that, um, just, uh, uh, just enough to clean it up on both sides and then changed straight to the 2500 grit paper for a, a fine polish uh, and that did the trick. We're not, this isn't a, a working surface so the only point here is just to clean it up so that it looks good. With all the work we've been doing the underside of the frog picked up a wee bit of a patina so whilst I've got the 2500 grit paper down might as well give it a wee polish. With all that work in the paper it's possible that some burrs can appear along the edges where the polished surfaces meet. So here I'm just using the extra fine diamond file just to dress them up a little bit. Before I set the frog to one side I'm going to use some of the Skeleton Saw's Peacock Wax to protect it. I just apply it with a, a paper towel and then buff it up with a yellow cloth. It's really good stuff. Well, I'm happy with that finish. Uh, you'll notice that the cast parts, um, the unmachined parts, I'm just leaving them. Uh, you can brush them clean, but uh, they don't do anything so apart from aesthetics. Now, this part of the chip breaker, this is the upper surface, front and rear, that's where the cap iron contacts and the chip breaker blade assembly slides underneath the cap iron. So I'm just going to polish that. So starting off with my magnetic blocks on the, the front edge, um, bit of taffing going on, uh, 
and uh, then I'll use my magnetic block on the rear edge and polish that. So we're not trying to get that flat, we're just trying to get a nice polish so that we can have a, a good smooth sliding action underneath that cap iron. Now I'm using uh, both magnetic blocks to get a better grip and I'm just working my way up the grits of paper again, finishing off with the uh, 2500 grit paper. Uh, that's good enough, it's not flat, it's polished and that's what we want to ensure a good sliding action under the cap iron. Now for the cap iron itself, mainly we're just cleaning that, so I'm going to use some Otisol metal polish to do that and uh, we'll put a little dab on and then spread it around with the paper towel. I like to just keep rubbing away with the paper towel and the Otisol and gradually you'll see the polish start to appear as the, as the muck is taken off and this black residue is created. The polish appears underneath and that's when you know you've done with the cleaning phase. Clean off the black residue as best you can with a paper towel. Uh, take your time and get into all the nooks and crannies to get as much of that black residue off as you can. Finally, here's a neat little procedure that uh, Shane Skelton uses uh, when he's finishing up the bronze and brass on his saws that he makes. He uses his peacock wax and he uses that as a final step. Um, it both protects and polishes, but it gets rid of that remaining black residue. And you can see it on the paper there. There's quite a lot of it still remaining. And that's what gives you that nice, silky, smooth, shiny finish to the part and that's what we want here. Use a soft rag to polish up the part and that's a really good finish. And now we're going to work on that front edge. The setup for polishing the tip of the cap iron is quite straightforward. I've got the granite surface plate, a piece of 220 grit paper. And I'm just taffing this whilst rocking it upwards and downwards to try and get a, a, a nice rounded edge with a good even polish. I went straight to the 2500 grit paper to finish off the polishing and that leaves us with a nice flat polished tip to that cap iron. Well that's it for part one everyone. Believe it or not that was the easy stuff. Coming up in part two we'll continue to fettle all the little bolts and screws. Uh, we'll also be uh, resolving a problem that I discovered on the depth adjuster yoke on the frog. We'll look at another issue with the cap iron or, or lever cap as uh, the terms are interchangeable. Also I discovered something interesting about the way the blade sits on the frog when the chip breaker is tensioned. Something I'd never seen before. We'll have a look at that in part two. Well thank you for watching everyone and we'll see you next time on Mr Lynn's Workshop.